So we just got a ton of new information and trailer footage about Borderlands 3 and we're going to be breaking this down in this video going over a ton of different talking points. We have some new information on the Vault Hunters, uh, the worlds we're going to be visiting, some general descriptions of the game and most importantly the release date for the game which is September the 13th 2019 mark that day on your calendars that is the official release and i cannot wait for this game to come out but anyway i do want to show you guys the trailer first so i'll play that for you guys and once the trailer has finished we'll come back break it down and go over some more talking points that has been revealed about the game So that was the new trailer footage and to say I'm hyped is an understatement. I have been waiting for this game for years now and seeing so much information and gameplay being put out there is so great to see. But anyway, getting back into it, alongside the trailer, some new information and an overall description about the game, what's new in the game, the Vault Hunters and much more was also released. So jumping straight into this, starting off with the initial description for the game, it states, The original shooter looter returns, packing bazillions of guns and an all new mayhem fueled adventure. Blast through new worlds and enemies as one of four brand new Vault Hunters, the ultimate treasure seeking badasses of the Borderlands, each with deep skill trees, abilities and customization. Play solo or join with friends to take on insane enemies, collect loads of loot and save your home from the most ruthless cult leaders in the galaxy. So already sounding awesome from that alone, but continuing on, what's new? For one, a mayhem fueled thrill ride. Stop the fanatical Calypso twins from uniting the bandit clans and claiming the galaxy's ultimate power. Talking of Vault Hunters, we actually got to see a lot more gameplay of them this time around, as well as their official names. Before it was just leaked, they weren't really official, there was no real mention of them, but now it's official, these are the actual Vault Hunters. So starting off, we have Moe's as the gunner. When Mose needs backup, she digestructs her mech, Iron Bear, for a sucker punch of additional firepower. And again, you can see some new gameplay of this in the background. I'll also show you guys the old gameplay as well, just to give you guys a bit more of an idea of what her powerful mech looks like. Just to mention as well, one of your teammates can actually hop into that mech on a mounted turret for additional firepower if needed as well. And apparently her skill tree is going to be very co-op focused. At the moment, there is no mention of the skill trees or any of the skill trees shown. So we'll have to wait to see more of that. But yeah, that is Moe's. Of course, next up we have Amara as the Siren, a confident brawler with the ability to summon ethereal fists. Amara uses her Siren powers to smash her enemies. And again, you guys will see uh, some extra gameplay of that. You can also see what I think is her normal melee ability, where it kind of like pushes the enemy away. 
Just a very interesting detail that was shown in the trailer. Let me know what you guys think of Amara in the comment section below. It seems like she's shaping up to be a very interesting bolt hunter. Uh, but moving on, we now have Flak as the Beastmaster, and uh, Flak there is spelled F L 4 K. The description for him reads, Flak lives for the hunt. So do the loyal beasts that follow their master's every command. Their preferred prey, unsuspecting bandits, those poor suckers. So yes, that is Flak, and again, we get to see some more gameplay of him. Uh, he does have three different creatures that he has control over. And um, one of the only ones I think known so far is the Skag. We will have to wait and see to see what those other two are 100%. There was a couple of theories thrown out there, but none of it's kind of concrete at this point. But yeah, I mean, Flak seems to be my kind of Vault Hunter. I do like him a lot, as well as the next one in line, which is Zane as the Operative. Specializing in battlefield gadgetry, Zane is extremely proficient at slipping into combat, creating chaos, and sneaking back out as if he was never there. Now from that description, he sounds a lot more interesting to me now, whereas before, we didn't really know much about him. We knew that he had some form of self-projection skill, um, but to what level, we didn't really know. We saw a little bit of gameplay of this from the first original trailer. But in this one, we actually get to see a little bit more from him. He has like a gadget on his arm that he kind of throws out as like a drone. Who knows how powerful and what kind of abilities that drone will have alongside, of course, his other abilities. But from his description, he seems, again, like my type of Vault Hunter. But anyway, that is pretty much it for the Vault Hunter descriptions. Again, let me know your thoughts on all of them in the comment section below. And so far from all of the footage and info, who are you more likely to play out of the four? Anyway, moving on again to some more information that was displayed, it states, lock, load, and loot. With bazillions of guns and gadgets, every fight is an opportunity to score new gear. Firearms with self-propelling bullet shields, check. Rifles that spawn fire-spewing volcanoes, that sounds absolutely insane, uh, but <laughs> moving on again, Obviously, guns that grow legs and chase down enemies while hurling verbal insults. Yeah, got that too. And uh, in terms of the gun with legs, we saw that in the original trailer. Little did we know that that gun right there and supposedly multiple other ones that may or may not have legs will also be hurling verbal insults at people. That is just Borderlands humor at its highest right there. Perfect, perfect, perfect stuff going on. Um, but moving away from that now, we have New Borderlands. Discover new worlds beyond Pandora, each featuring unique environments to explore and enemies to destroy. Tear through hostile deserts, battle your way across war-torn cityscapes, and navigate deadly Bayus and more. So very, very interesting. We are not just on Pandora anymore we are visiting multiple different worlds one of them being eden 6 which i think is a great addition to this game the ability to visit multiple planets kind of teased at the end of borderlands 2 originally but the fact that it's actually came to fruition now years later is a great thing anyway now moving on to one of the final talking points of the video and in my opinion one of the biggest game changers for the franchise it states quick and seamless co-op action. With a new level sync system, the experience scales for each individual player. That means you can play with anyone at any time online or in split screen co-op, regardless of your level or mission progress. Take down enemies and challenges as a team, but reap rewards that are yours alone. No one misses out on loot. Now again, in my opinion, this is a big game changer. This means that if your friends are slightly above you in level or in, in terms of mission progress, you can still join them. I'm assuming that, again, level sync system means that 
the enemies levels will scale down to whatever level that you are or at least within that range and on top of that there is going to be no more loot crabbing and uh, I use that term very weirdly it, it's a very weird term but essentially when you kill you know certain bosses in the game and they drop a ton of loot typically you and your friends would just rush for the loot pile and try to grab the legendary weapon if there was one that dropped and whoever got it kind of just kept the weapon and sometimes some of my friends will keep getting the weapons over and over again and they were just so good at grabbing the legendaries as quick as possible. Kind of got annoying for me but I had to deal with it and now it seems like that won't be a problem anymore. When you kill an enemy it will drop a weapon and it will drop it for you alone and each person in your lobby will also have the luxury of doing that as well. So it's very interesting to see how that will affect the game because it's going to be very different and depending on how this operates in game it could be a good or bad thing, but it seems like it's going to be a good thing at the very least. And again, let me know your thoughts on this part of the video in the comment section below, because in my opinion, very big game changer there. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the main talking points of what was shown. I hope you guys did enjoy this video today. If you did, consider leaving a like down below. It's always greatly appreciated on the channel, guys. And if you are new around, be sure to subscribe. I am going to be covering this game extensively when it releases from top 10 legendary weapons, the best ways to farm for legendary weapons, all the typical kind of listicle styled videos, news, tips, tricks, and stuff like that is what you can come to expect when this game releases. Other than that, hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.